Hi. Designers are informed by what the market asks for, what technology can offer, and increasingly by the insights in the lives and experiences of the intended users, the context of use. When you design for somebody else, you want it to fit into their everyday lives, into their experience, that context of use. To make it fit, you have to understand the context. Looking at the context can give you unexpected insights into what your design should do. Let's look at an example, the morning coffee. Here you see a coffee cup. You probably know how you have your coffee in the morning and how you experience the ritual. But how do other people have their coffee? Do they even have coffee? Just a cup on a table shows you only a little bit of context. A broader look tells you where and how it's used. On the table, in the morning, lifted with one hand. And if you broaden the view a bit more, you see it is part of the breakfast table. And you notice the drinker of coffee is not alone. You see the where and when, at the table, in the morning. Look further and you see that he is busy with several things at once. Your coffee cup is only one part of a larger activity, the family breakfast. In this case, he has to manage the baby and another child. When he drinks, he'll have to watch out with the hot coffee. Will he find the opportunity to eat from his own bowl of cereals? And there's more. Another adult is making preparations in the kitchen and yesterday's washing up hasn't been done yet. Our activities often involve other people with whom we arrange our lives. Is there time for a chat in the busy morning ritual? Must the daily schedule still be planned each evening before, or is it a routine? And it doesn't stop at that, at the moment of consuming a hot drink. What we do now links to what we did before and what we do after. In this case, it's bringing the kids to school before driving off to work. Clearly, they have their hands full with managing getting up and getting the family in motion for the day. That cup of coffee is part of a much bigger story. Did he drink the coffee to prepare for the trip? When you look at the family closely, you see that daily activities are part of a complex whole. Here you only saw a part of a breakfast and bringing the kids to school, a small part of someone's morning ritual. It involves space and time, people and feelings, activities and concerns. The question is, how far should you go as a designer to include more insights? How big is the context? What plays a part in their experiences, in their motivations? Is it about what happens at the table? About how people have breakfast? About how they prepare their family for the day? Somewhere you have to draw a boundary, and that boundary depends on what you want to design. It helps to choose two boundaries, the focus, what you're designing for, and the scope, a bigger picture that is connected to that. For instance, if you focus on designing something that should improve the experience of having coffee at home, the scope could be having breakfast. Or if that's too narrow, the focus could be having breakfast and the context preparing for the day. Your design challenge determines how to set the focus and scope. If you're designing for a better coffee experience, you might be concerned most with what happens at the breakfast table. If you're designing something that helps a busy family to plan their day, you would focus on the people involved and what they do on the rest of the day. Usually, there is some natural boundary to how far you can go. If not from the design challenge, then it will be determined by your project budget. The context of use consists of all aspects that can influence the experience of a product use. It involves what people do, why they do it, how they feel about it, what is meaningful for them, who else is involved, and practical things like when and where it happens. What sources do you have to build that understanding of the context?
and the experiences of other people. You have your own experiences and you already made a mind map to chart these. But because you're designing for others, you should expect that they do things differently from you. Like the guy with the coffee and the kids just now. Finding out about the user's context is in part finding how they are just like you, as well as how they are different from you. Most importantly, it is about discovering things you hadn't thought were important to uncover your blind spots. Yet there's more. There are scientific principles and research. Often these provide direction, but they are formulated quite narrowly, such as 85% of people have a hot drink in the morning. Useful, but narrow. And there is a lot we think we know, but that isn't so. Every day we see people depicted on TV, on the internet. Type drinking coffee on Google or browse some magazines, and you get plenty of information. But that information can be misleading. The internet and TV show a lot of wishful images that try to push an idealized message, as in stock photos and in advertisements. Here's an example. If you go by the ads, bringing up children is an easy joy. Everybody is happy and healthy, clean, and nobody gets dirty when washing or feeding the baby. Reality turns out to be a bit more messy. If you look at images of work situations, everybody's in suits, having casual conversations, and exchanging colorful bar diagrams in high fashion buildings. But go and look into the world, and you'll discover it ain't as simple as that. There's no substitute for stepping into the context yourself. Visit your intended users. Observe the way they do things. Talk with them and reflect on it. And it's not just having a glance or asking them to solve your design problem. You're not selling things to them, but you're learning from them. So what's the bottom line of this lecture? If you're designing for somebody else, you need to understand their situation and experiences. The what, how, and why of things in their lives. Going in, observing, and talking to such other people is an essential step in discovering what makes them tick. And to see in what situation your design should fit. Bye for now. And remember to have a good look.